Previously on Creepy Gaming, Mike's having a hard day while going over Pokédex entries. I've had better days. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, boy. Uh, Daddy's got a little bit of a headache today, okay, sweetie? So we're just gonna go ahead and move this right along here. Today we're gonna be talking about Pokemon. Don't ever drink, kids. All right, so like I said, we're just gonna kind of get this ball rolling here. Oh, got dizzy. Will he find more success with Easter eggs and creepy pastas? Uh, oh, God. I doubt it. Oh, God. Moving on from these disturbing Pokedex entries, let's talk about some other strange Easter eggs theories and creepypastas. In a previous episode, we covered the controversial LTS, or also known as Lavender Town Syndrome. Please feel free to go back and watch that episode to hear my thoughts. We've also covered the infamous Ghost Girls from the latest generation of Pokemon games, just recently as a matter of fact. To catch up on those who are unaware, there is a strange hex maniac ghost girl in Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, as well as X and Y. She's probably best known from her appearance in Lumwa City in X and Y when the screen fades in and out, she floats around you and says, no, you are not the one. Although, some people still claim that she'll say to them, you are the one I've been looking for. Am I repeating myself? I feel like I'm repeating myself. Anyway, moving on. I recently found out that if you go to the fourth floor of the Hotel Rishima... I recently found out if you go to the fourth floor of the Hotel Rishishima, you will run into the same woman. This time, she will say, don't talk to me. If you do, I won't hear the elevator. This may be in reference to the first game when you meet her on the second floor near the elevator. And thanks to my buddy, the gamer from Mars, who I've collaborated with before, informed me that if you go behind the schedule board of the Lumwa City Station, you will discover a note that reads, I am going to go for help. Wait for me in the usual place. This leads many to theorize that this mysterious note must be in some way related to the ghost girl. <sighs> Just a little, Just take a little nappy poo there. What is it with all these ghost girls? Now that we've addressed some disturbing Pokedex entries, creepy Easter eggs, and a theory or two, let's briefly discuss a few Pokemon creepypastas. As for mentioned, I've already talked about Lavender Town Syndrome, so let's start with one I've gotten a ton of requests for, Pokemon Strangled Red. This story is about a guy who finds a red Pokemon cartridge. He played the blue version growing up, so he wanted to see the difference between the two. When starting the game, the strange title screen said, Pokemon Strangled Red. Well, guess what? Wouldn't you know it? Weird shit happens. While playing, he then goes to his legit rival's house in Pallet Town. There, he encounters a character named Red. And let me just tell you from personal experience, a character in a creepypasta named Red can't be a good sign. Red simply states that he'd be the best when it was his turn. The player uses his favorite, Miki, his Charizard, throughout the rest of the game. He eventually beats it, but rather than the typical Pokemon endings, he got something totally different. At this point, the red cartridge was either some kind of hack or something really weird was happening. After what should have been the ending, his character and his brother in the game decide to trade Pokemon. His brother wants Miki, his favorite Charizard. 
The player selects no, but the game does not recognize it, forcing him to trade his favorite Pokemon. While trading, the game crashes and creepypasta chaos ensues. I won't give it all away, but it's a must read for any creepypasta fan who loves Pokemon. It's an older story, but a goodie. I like the older ones, I guess. I've, I've tend to refer to these now as the classics, or the originals, if you will. Another older story would be Pokemon Creepy Black. It was great for its time. It centers around a trainer and his particular ghost Pokemon. The story shares a few similarities with another classic, Ben Drowned. It also has a really good ending that I'm not going to spoil. It's a good read, or hell, you can play these creepy pastas now. I'm pretty sure there's ROM hacks for Strangled Red, Creepy Black, Lost Silver, Shitty Sapphire, Cummy White Pearl, whatever the hell else. You can find them. They're out there. If I had to give any other suggestions to my creepypasta viewers, then I'd suggest Nurse Joy, Adino's Revenge, and of course, Lost Silver. As I've said many times before, and I'm sure I'll say it many times again, the creepy factor to a kid's game just makes it that much more eerie. Everybody say it with me now. The creepy factor to a kid's game just makes it that much more eerie. But in its defense, as I stated earlier, I feel as if it has added yet another layer to an already deep franchise. Pokemon has found its core buried within creepy gaming history. With its weird easter eggs, intriguing theories, bizarre ghost girls, and numerous creepypastas. Yeah, I'd say it takes the cake. It's so bad. It's just not stopping. <laughs> I'm never gonna drink again. Yep, I think that about does it. I can't possibly think of another Pokemon creepypasta out there that scared the holy living fuck out of me. Nope, not a clue. Nothing really comes to mind. Besides, got this headache. Ugh, you know, just not today. No. No, 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 I need sleepy. Children, come with me. You hear me? You leave me alone, you bright yellow bastard. Getting kind of, getting kind of sleepy. Well, that's gonna do it for me today, guys. I'm gonna go pass out, take a little nappy poo. So, to keep it. Peace.